To determine simplest or empirical formulas, the key to success is determining the ratio of the atoms present. The empirical or simplest formula is simply the smallest whole numbered ratio of the elements or the atoms that are present. For example, here you have a sugar molecule, C6H12O6. Well, that is the molecular formula. The simplest formula is CH2O because that's the smallest number to which it will reduce. But there's a lot of difference between simplest and molecular formulas. Find your simplest formula first. Determining that simplest formula is simply a matter of finding the smallest ratio of atoms. And to do this, you convert from the quantities that you were given to the ratio of the number of atoms present. And while that may sound difficult at first, it's strictly a matter of remembering to get to moles first because moles is a way of expressing the number of atoms that you have. Here's an example. We have a sample of iron oxide containing 34.97 grams of iron and 15.03 grams of oxygen. Let's find the formula. Well, we take our iron, which is 34.97 grams, and we convert it to moles of iron atoms. It's one mole over 55.85 grams. 55.85 grams now is the gram atomic weight of iron. And that tells me that I have 0 0.6261 mole of iron. For the oxygen, take the 15.03 grams times 1 mole over 16 grams. Now remember, we're dealing with atoms here in a formula, so you don't use the fact that oxygen is diatomic. That has nothing to do with this. And that gives us 0 0.9394 mole. All right, convert each to small whole numbers. How do you do that? Divide each of these number of moles by the smallest number. And what you're doing with this when you divide the 0 0.6261 by itself is you're setting the smaller number to 1. And then you will determine the ratio of the larger number to that smaller number by taking the 0.9394, dividing it by 0.6261, and getting 1.5. Now, you may not get exactly 1.5. You may get something like 1.48 or 1.49 or 1.51 or something like that. We'll take it to the nearest reasonable fraction. And in this case, it's 1.5. Now you have to remove the fraction because you have the formula now is one iron to one and a half oxygens. Oh no, I don't think so. To remove the fraction, multiply it by the denominator. The one and a half has a denominator of two. So multiply both and you get two irons and three oxygens and your formula is Fe2O3. Here's another problem. An oxide of carbon contains 27.29% carbon. Find the simplest formula. Well, the easiest way to go about this is to remember that when the quantity is given in percent and not mass, it's easy to convert to mass. Just assume you have a 100 gram sample. And the quantity of carbon then becomes 27.29 grams. What other element is present? Well, if it's an oxide, you know the other element is oxygen. And what is the quantity of that oxygen? Well, we take 100 grams, the weight of the sample, minus the weight of the carbon that's in there, and we get 72.71 grams of oxygen. Now, you can work it out. If you would like, stop this video and work it out. And then I will show you how to do it. Here, let me show you the rest of the problem. The carbon is 27.29 grams, and we get that to moles by multiplying by 1 mole over 12.01 grams. And that's going to give us 2.272 moles carbon. The oxygen is 72.71 grams. We convert that to moles by multiplying by 1 mole over 16 grams. 
and that gives us 4.544 moles. So our formula tells us then that we've got 2.272 mole carbon and 4.544 mole oxygen, but we need it to be small whole numbered ratios. So we convert it to small whole numbers by dividing each result by the smaller, which happens to be the number of moles of carbon. So the carbon is 2.272, of, of course, is going to equal 1. And the oxygen is going to come out to be 2. And it's amazingly close here. And so the formula is CO2. Now that was kind of simple. We need to do one that's a little more interesting. You have a 3 gram sample of the hydrate Na2SO4 dot YH2O, and I put Y there because we don't know how many water molecules are in it. But we do know that if we take that 3 gram sample of the hydrate and we heat it, that after we have heated it to constant weight, that salt residue is going to weigh 1.59 grams. We want to know how many water molecules are present in the formula. What we really want to know is what's the real formula for this. Here we go. The key to solving it is keep it simple. You're looking at that and saying, oh my goodness, that's got sodium and sulfur and oxygen and hydrogen. How am I going to do this and then know how many of what goes where? Ah, this is the way to do it. We know the formula for the salt. The formula for the salt is Na2SO4. So treat that as if it were a single element and don't break it down. We know the formula for water is H2O, so treat it as if it were an element and don't break it down. The salt is an element, if you will, in A2SO4, having a, if you will, atomic weight of 142.01 grams per mole. I got that 142.01 grams per mole by adding up the weight of two sodiums, a sulfur, and four oxygens. And treat the water as if it were an element having a, quote, atomic weight, end quote, of 18.02 grams per mole. Yes, now watch how nicely it works. You want to try it? If you want to try it, stop the video. And then when you're ready, come back and I'll show you how I worked it. The formula, by the way, is Na2SO47H2O. Did you get that? Here, here's how I did it. I started with a sodium sulfate of 1.59 grams, and I multiplied that by one mole over 142.01 grams, and that told me that I have 0.0112 moles sodium sulfate. I took the water, and where did I get the 1.41 grams? Look at the bottom of the screen. I took the 3 gram sample of hydrate and subtracted from that the weight of sodium sulfate, and what was left had to be water. 1.41 grams of water times a mole over 18.02 grams told me that I had 0.0782 moles of water. Now just go on just like you've done before. The sodium sulfate, we're going to use that moles for our denominator because it's a smaller number. So that tells us that we have one sodium sulfate and to that one sodium sulfate we have when we divide for water, seven waters. One sodium sulfate, seven water. So we have Na2SO4, seven H2O. Brought to you by the chemistry professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our website, www.chemistryprofessor.com.